This is what starting an Audi R8 V10 performance sounds like. And this is what starting the successor of the R8 will sound like. Because, you know, everything has to become electric now. This is the end of the line for this gorgeous, naturally aspirated V10 supercar, so it's only right that to celebrate it, we start off with a launch control. Left foot on the brake, gas all the way down, let it build, build, and go. My name is Omar, and this is the Audi R8 V10 Performance. So you know how I always say that I'm going to give you a quick tour of this car and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy one. Well, with this one, I'm going to say it right away. Just buy it. If you have the money, go get one. Because you're going to absolutely love every single day that you drive it. What you have here is a 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V10. And if you go for the R8 Performance rear wheel drive, that V10 will give you 562 horsepower and 400 and six pound-feet of torque. If you go for the Quattro all-wheel drive one, you'll get 602 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque. Audi decided not to offer the V8 this year because, you know, they're saying farewell to the R8, and they figured what better way to do that than to just offer this with a V10. Now, this car is way more than just straight-line acceleration and zero to 60 times, but of course, I'll tell you what they are. The rear wheel drive R8 V10 performance is able to go from zero to 60 in just 3.6 seconds with a top speed of 204 miles an hour. The Quattro all wheel drive, on the other hand, that will do zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds with a top speed of 206 miles an hour, a speed you're likely never going to hit. The one I'm driving here is the rear wheel drive one, so yeah, it can be a little scary if you don't know what you're doing, but you'll certainly enjoy this V10. This thing redlines at around 8,500 RPM, so it rewards you living up higher in the rev range and man it sounds absolutely brilliant my god jeez i can't get over this sound but that's only when you're driving it if you want to show off while you're parked you can't because it has a soft limiter take a listen <laughs> How annoying it must be to spend this much money on a car and not be able to show off the sound of your V10. That said, let me give you a quick tour of this thing. I'll show you the updates on the inside, some updates on the outside, and then I'll continue to tell you how it drives and why you should buy one. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, so the Audi R8, this thing has Lambo power, Lambo speed, Lambo fun, but it doesn't have the Lambo price. While the Huracan will run you well over $210,000, the R8 V10 starts at $148,700 for the rear-wheel drive one. Of course, as soon as you go for the Quattro R8 V10, you'll approach that $200,000 price tag. As tested here, the rear-wheel drive model that I'm driving carries a final price tag of $187,095. Which, yeah, if you're good at math, unlike me, is an extra $38,000 over the base price tag, and I'll tell you why as we go along. All right, let's start off by talking about this beautiful V10 since this is the last time we're going to see it. Now to pop open the glass in the back, you have to have the R8 turned on. You can't access it and enjoy its beauty with it turned off. But once it's turned on, you just hit this button right here behind the driver's seat and then you can lift up the glass and take a look at that beautiful V10. When it comes to the looks, I personally think the R8 is absolutely gorgeous. It still turns heads everywhere you go, especially if you get it in the Vegas yellow color like my test model here. A lot of people have been giving me a thumbs up all weekend, taking out their phones and snapping photos, and that just goes to show that this thing is a beauty to look at. On the front, you've got these gorgeous LED headlamps and you have LED taillights in the back with sequential turn signals. But I will say that Audi hasn't done anything crazy with the lights like they do on their other cars. I expected them to add some flair for 2022 to the R8 since this is their pride and joy, but no, there's no animations or anything crazy. Just sequential turn signals in the back. 
Now, the most expensive option that adds on to that $38,000 jump in the price tag is the Dynamic Package for $12,900. Yeah, you heard that right. For that price tag, you get these sharp 20-inch wheels in a titanium finish, and they look really nice. Right behind those wheels is what contributes to the majority of the price to this package, and those are the giant carbon ceramic brakes. They are amazing, they stop on the dime, but they are very expensive. And then the Dynamic Package will also give you Recaro Racing seats on the inside, wrapped in fine Napa leather. My test model also has the Carbon Exterior Package for $5,600, and that adds carbon fiber to the side blades right here, and it also adds some carbon fiber elements to the engine compartment. But yeah, let me know what you think about the design of the R8 in the comments below. Do you think it has aged well? Do you think it will continue to turn heads, say, 10 years from now? Let me know in the comments. Now, while the outside has remained largely unchanged since the R8 first came out, the interior has been pretty much updated. The biggest update was made in 2016 when Audi got rid of the center screen. The only screen you have here now is this one, the digital gauge cluster display, or as Audi calls it, the virtual cockpit display. This screen houses everything from all of your vehicle settings and all the info that you'll ever need. You can go through and customize it in many different ways, and you have a bunch of different viewing modes. But yeah, this has everything from your navigation system with a full screen map view, which always looks beautiful on the Audi virtual cockpit display. And you also have your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto displayed right here. Now, at first you might think this is a bit difficult to use, but after driving this around for a week, I quickly got used to it. Everything is right in your point of view. And in fact, I found this to be a little bit easier than having to always look away and look at the center screen as long as you get used to where everything is. And I'll admit, there is a little bit of a learning curve. You can control the whole system by using the controls on the steering wheel or by using the quick shortcut buttons and this dial right here on the center console. Both are very easy to use. And as long as you get used to it, give it about five or 10 minutes, it's a pretty solid system. Speaking of the steering wheel, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's very nice to hold. It's a very nice size for a vehicle of this size. You have a bright red start and stop button right here. And on the left side, you have your drive select button that will let you circle through all of your various drive modes. Now, if you go for the sport exhaust package for $3,600, you'll get a few other buttons and dials. Well, just two more. That package will add on a sport exhaust system. And with that, you'll get this button that will let you turn your exhaust sound from sport to standard. Keep it on sport and don't worry about what your neighbors say. Enjoy your R8. On the left, you have a button and a dial with a checkered flag on it. Push it and that will let you circle through a few performance modes. As long as you're in dynamic mode, you can use this dial to circle through snow, wet or dry. And those are the conditions that you can have in your R8. But yeah, since all the action is right in front of the driver, the center area is pretty neat and clean. All you really have are these three dials for your climate control. And I think this is a very minimalistic minimalism look. It looks nice and clean. I believe Audi did it this way to give the R8 a chance to have a timeless interior and in my opinion, it's absolutely gorgeous. The simple three dials here will let you adjust your fan speed, the temperature, and your air circulation settings. And right behind those dials, you have your buttons for your heated seats, which are standard. I don't believe that you can get ventilated or cooled seats on the R8, but don't quote me on that. Now, right below that area, you have another set of buttons, but the most important is this button right here that will allow you to deploy your rear spoiler. Of course, that rear spoiler will also go up and retract automatically, but if you want to manually deploy it to look cool, you can use this button and be that cool person that you always want it to be. But yeah, I personally think that this interior will age really well, and the best thing is that it's actually quite comfortable. Yes, getting in and out is a bit difficult since the R8 sits low, but once you're in here, it's super nice. My test model adds on the premium package for $5,900, and that will give you some more leather all around this interior. That package also gives you an upgraded Bang & Olufsen sound system that sounds absolutely amazing. I've also got a carbon interior package for $3,400, and that adds on some carbon fiber trim all around this interior. Now, the only thing that I found a bit annoying is that my test model has the Recaro Racing seats that are manually adjustable on a $187,000 plus car you have manually adjustable seats. That's a big no for me. They're supposed to be lightweight, but I'm just wondering how much weight they're really saving. But don't worry, because as standard, the R8 comes with 18-way power adjustable seats, so just make sure you don't get these. And those are more comfortable anyway, so just stick with the standard seats. 
Now, since the engine is in the back, you don't have a trunk, so you have a front, and you can pop open the front by using your keys, or you can use this button located right here, and then you come around and lift it up, and you have 3.9 cubic feet of space. Round it up to four, but it's still not much. But yeah, at least there's something. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the R8 drives, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'll have to show all of you. You have two cup holders, and they're located right here. Those are your two cup holders. Probably not convenient, but they're there. Here are what the keys look like to the R8. You have a R8 logo on the back right there. This is the older Audi key design. So yeah, but still really nice. Not to mention you have a little slot where you can put your keys while you're driving. Pretty cool. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Getting in here is a little difficult, but once you get in, all right, from the inside, solid. Charging game wise, you have two USB-A ports and a wireless charger, no USB-C ports at all. And that's really it. And of course, let's do an indicator and horn sound. Test indicator first. Pretty normal. Now for the horn sound. That's solid. Very nice. Now here's the best thing about the R8. This thing is known to be the perfect daily supercar. So if you just pop this into comfort or auto mode, you can just cruise along and drive like a normal human being. Of course, it's important to note that the seats on my test model here have been swapped out due to that crazy dynamic package. These are the Recaro racing seats, and while they aren't as comfortable as the original seats that come with the R8, they aren't all that terrible. But you definitely don't want to be driving like this all the time. I mean, you paid over $187,000 as tested here, so you definitely want to open up that V10 and enjoy that sound. I want one so bad. This is the best feeling ever. I love it. Now let's talk handling really quick. The steering feel isn't tight. It actually feels pretty loose. However, this thing absolutely grips really hard. This thing handles in such an epic way that it's honestly hard to drive this like a normal human being if you have one. I feel like the harder you push it, the more it rewards you. It gives you all the confidence in the world and makes you a better driver. And if somebody slow comes in front of you on an exit ramp, you're just disappointed. Absolutely disappointed. But yeah, it's quite an experience. It feels so light and so delicate and extremely precise all at the same time. You just turn it slightly and the R8 goes hard into that direction. Now, I would personally go for the Quattro due to the performance and because I live in a cold weather state. But no matter which one you go for, you'll absolutely enjoy driving it. This is the first supercar that I'm honestly not scared of. I actually feel like a pro driving it. And of course, the stopping power on my test model here comes from giant carbon ceramic brakes. So no matter what speed you're traveling at and if you hit the brakes, this thing will slow down insanely fast. You can just be gunning it down the road at let's say 80 miles an hour and you slam on the brakes and oh my god it pushes you forward. Those are some crazy brakes. Again, they do cost $12,500 but they will rip your face off. Oh my god. And I wasn't even pushing it that hard there. Wow. It might be worth the upgrade. It might be worth that $12,500. Is it better than the Lamborghini Huracan that it shares its V10 with? Sure, it's similar. I just feel like this is easier to live with. It won't scare you away in terms of the price tag and the way this thing moves. This kind of reminds me of the Acura NSX. Both are very comfortable daily supercars that you can live with on a daily basis and really open up and enjoy the performance of them. And yes, the R8 no longer comes with the manual transmission, which, yeah, is more fun to drive, but this seven-speed automatic is insanely quick when you shift it. Four, three, four, five, six. It's insanely quick. You're not gonna miss out at all. This is the last of the naturally aspirated V10s. This is it, because after this, the successor of the R8 will be all electric. It won't sound like this. It'll definitely be heavier. So yeah, if you want to enjoy the last of its kind, get one today. I am certainly curious how the whole Audi e-tron philosophy 
will apply to the next version of this, but I'm pretty certain that I won't be as excited as I have been driving this around all week. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. Gotta pay attention. All right, let's go. Oh, I love it. I'm gonna miss the V10s, what can I say? I will buy one of these one day, used, for sure. The only thing I don't like about my R8 experience is the cup holders. Like, they're always hitting your elbow. So you really can't have a drink while you're driving this. And I get it, you should be focused on driving this thing, not drinking LaCroix or Dunkin' Donuts.